What are dinosaurs? We do know. Shut the fuck up. These days, just about anything that's large and vaguely behemoth-like is called a dinosaur by the public. Now, I don't blame the public, especially since the media hasn't exactly given them a really good idea of what actually is a dinosaur. However, I'm going to tell you today exactly what dinosaurs are, because science, in fact, has a very clear and distinct definition of what dinosaurs are that includes quite a lot of your favorites, but excludes quite a lot of others. So today, I'm going to drunkenly crush hearts and break dreams, and hopefully teach a couple people about cladistics, dinosaurs, and what exactly we know about ancient life. Cladistics is a method of classifying organisms based on their evolutionary relationships, which can be determined utilizing a variety of different types of data. The system that we used before this, Linnaean classification, utilized living organisms to determine a rank-based system that divided up life based on arbitrarily chosen traits. Now this system runs into trouble because it cannot accurately reflect the diversity of life on Earth and how it has evolved on this planet because it doesn't really account for transitional forms. It also cannot be scientifically attested because it's not based on hypotheses and data, but rather on human choice. So even though cladistics is a little bit messier and harder to understand, it better reflects life on Earth and is more scientific. Cladistics also reflects the reality of evolution as not some sort of process directed towards an end goal, like a ladder, but rather a tree, with all different forms of life just adapting to fill different niches in order to survive. In fact, teaching Linnaean classification confuses students and makes them wonder, where do we draw the line? What makes something one thing? What makes it another thing? And how exactly does this fit into how life evolved on the planet? So really, cladistics is the best way to do it, and that is not the point of this video. In cladistics, we have two different ways of defining a group of organisms. Either all organisms that are descended from the most recent common ancestor of A and B, or all organisms that are more closely related to C than to D, as shown in my lovely diagram. Dinosaurs happen to be a group like the first kind, which are defined based on the first two dinosaurs that were discovered, Megalosaurus and Iguanodon, which did not actually look like this picture. So, dinosaurs are all the descendants of the most recent common ancestor of Megalosaurus and Iguanodon, the first two dinosaurs discovered. Here is a visual representation of this group. It includes a lot of different organisms. However, it also doesn't include a lot of different organisms. So first, I'm going to go through the ones that it definitely doesn't include, and then we'll talk about the ones that it definitely does include. There is a little bit of confusion over whether or not certain animals that we can't really understand exactly where they fit in the tree of life and whether or not they are dinosaurs or aren't, and we're not going to discuss those because that's less about cladistics and definitions and more about how shitty fossils are. First, let's talk about the flying reptiles that are known as pterosaurs, even though the public likes to call them pterodactyls, even though that name only applies to the one shown here, Pterodactylus. This also includes classic favorites like Pteranodon and this weird thing called Sorties. As you can see here, pterosaurs are not in fact in the group entitled Dinosauria, but just outside of it. In fact, pterosaurs and dinosaurs are very closely related, and together they make up the group Ornithodira. However, pterosaurs are not dinosaurs, and they never have been. I know, I just crushed your dreams. But here's the thing about cladistics, that doesn't actually change anything about pterosaurs. They're still cool, they just aren't dinosaurs. Now let's go to another fan favorite, Plesiosaurus, the swimming reptile, or others like to call them Loch Ness Monsters. Plesiosaurus is not a dinosaur either, in fact it goes in this group. Now there's a little bit of debate over whether or not plesiosaurs actually belong in pantestudines because their cladistic relationships are quite uncertain or even if pantestudines belongs where it is in my diagram here as archosauromorphs. However, there is one thing that we are sure of when it comes to plesiosaurs and turtles, and it is that they are not, in fact, dinosaurs. But you know what is in plesiosauria? The pliosaurs, such as chronosaurus shown here, and the magical Leoplorodon. Nope, not dinosaurs. Also, mosasaurs, a group that have been given a lot of fame due to the recent Jurassic World movie and are not the same thing as pliosaurs because they are not part of the same cladistic group even though they look quite similar, are not dinosaurs. They are in fact very distantly related when it comes to reptiles and are more closely related to modern lizards and snakes because they are all part of this group, Lepidosauria which is decidedly outside of Dinosauria, and even outside of Archosauromorphs. And it includes such fan favorites as lizards and snakes, meaning no lizard, or snake, or mosasaur is a dinosaur. 
This group also includes the Tuatara, a strange reptile found only in New Zealand that isn't either a lizard or a snake or a mosasaur, and still isn't a dinosaur because it's in Lepidosauria. Another fan favorite group of Mesozoic reptiles that aren't in fact dinosaurs? Ichthyosaurs, you know. The dolphin marine reptiles. They're in Ichthyosauria, yet another group decidedly outside of Dinosauria, and in fact outside of Archosauromorphs and Lepidosauria, and that makes them not really that much closer related to dinosaurs or to lizards. Now I know I haven't mentioned crocodiles, you know, the modern reptiles that have weird pointy teeth and really bumpy skin. They aren't dinosaurs either. They're Pseudosuchians, a group that is in Archosauria, meaning that they're very closely related to dinosaurs. In fact, the only things that we've talked about today that are more closely related are pterosaurs. However, they are not descended from the most recent common ancestor of Megalosaurus and Iguanodon, and thus they are not dinosaurs. There are lots of weird reptiles that are a part of this group, such as Dinosuchus, Damastosuchus, and Postosuchus. However, none of these are dinosaurs. Tanistrophius, a weird reptile with a really frickin' long neck, is actually part of that archosauromorph group that I mentioned earlier, but not part of any of the more derived groups, meaning that it is not a dinosaur either! And as I mentioned before, turtles, which are part of that Pantestunines group, are in archosauromorphs as well, but are not in Dinosauria. They are not descended from the most recent common ancestor of Megalosaurus and Wagonon, and thus they are not dinosaurs! So at this point, we've learned that a lot of organisms that are commonly called reptiles, aka sauropsids, are not, in fact, in Dinosauria, even though Dinosauria is in Sauropsida, meaning that all dinosaurs are reptiles, but not all reptiles are dinosaurs. So all of these lovely critters you see in this picture are not dinosaurs, and nor are any of the other things that we've talked about. So you would think that that would be the end of the confusion, right? We've been through all the reptiles, which means that if it's not been covered here as a not dinosaur, then it must be a dinosaur. Well, you'd be surprised at how many things that aren't reptiles people still confuse as dinosaurs because they think that dinosaur means large, extinct organism. Our prime example is Dimetrodon, which is almost always confused as a dinosaur, even though it's not even a reptile. It's a synapsid. What is a synapsid? Well, synapses are defined in that second way that I talked about, in which case it's all organisms that are more closely related to mammals than they are to birds. So this includes lovely organisms like Dimetrodon, Gorgonops, and pretty much all mammals as defined in how we define synapsida. So all mammals, like the woolly mammoth, and saber-toothed cats, and pretty much all mammals, whether they big, alive, extinct, or small, and all, you know, amphibians that are alive today, extinct amphibians, pretty much all things that you would think of as fish, including bony fish, such as this and this weird thing, and, you know, the weird armor-plated fish that aren't alive anymore, like Dunkleosteus, and all cartilaginous fish, such as sharks and rays, which includes Megalodon, even though Megalodon is large and extinct. It is not a dinosaur, because it is not a part of Dinosauria. I know, I've just broken and destroyed all of your dreams and hopes, and I am so sorry. So let's stop focusing on the creatures that we've thrown out of the group that we would like to call Dinosauria, and focus on those things that are the descendants of the most recent common ancestor of Megalosaurus and Iguanodon. We have fan favorite Stegosaurus, its close relative Ankylosaurus, the also closely related but not as closely related Triceratops, and its close relative Parasaurolophus, their close relative Colindondromaeus, one of the greatest dinosaur discoveries of 2014, yet that was tragically not mentioned in a single Greatest Scientific Discoveries of 2014 magazine, even though they had dinosaurs that were much less important. That's a rant for another day. The sauropod Apatosaurus and all other so-called long-necked dinosaurs and such things like Compsognathus, even though Compsognathus was small and, you know, Velociraptor, which looked like this picture and not like what you see in Jurassic Park, but that's another rant for another day, and, you know, Tyrannosaurus rex. So yes, your favorite T-Rex was in fact a dinosaur. It is descended from the most recent common ancestor of the Megalosaurus and Iguanodon. It was big, it probably had feathers, but it was just as terrifying even with them. But let's focus on something else. We are actually missing quite a lot of dinosaurian diversity because we're limiting ourselves to creatures that were called dinosaurs in the past. But dinosaurs are all descendants of the most recent common ancestor of Megalosaur and Iguanodon, which includes this little group here, Avalae. 
you know what is the defining member of Avalay, aka Avalay is defined as all organisms more closely related to this thing than to Troodon, which we'll see at the end of the video. Um, yeah, that's Archaeopteryx, you know, that transitional form we mentioned earlier, the thing that was supposedly half bird and half reptile. It has a home now, in Avalay, in Dinosauria. It's a reptile. It might be a bird. I don't want to talk about that, that's another video. Because birds don't actually have a distinct cladistic definition, that's why that other video exists. But the point is, is that Avale is in Dinosauria, all members of Avale are dinosaurs. And this is a more detailed view of Avale. You know what group of organisms is in Avale? All modern birds, which is defined as Neornithes. So that includes such gems as Gastornis, which is extinct, and Forest Rockos, which is also extinct, and, you know, all birds that are still alive today, like the cassowary and the bull eagle, the symbol of America, and, you know, toucans and penguins and songbirds. So yes, all modern birds, all of those things with feathers that tweet and lay eggs and are flying around our heads are dinosaurs because they are descendant from the most recent common ancestor of Megalosaurus and Iguanodon. Congratulations, dinosaurs are still alive. And you know what? Birds might actually be the most diverse group of land vertebrates. There's a little bit of contention on whether or not lizards are more diverse than birds, but the point remains that birds are more diverse than mammals, so really, the age of dinosaurs never ended, it just became somewhat tinier. So congratulations, all the animals that you see on this screen here are dinosaurs, whether they're a modern bird or an extinct creature that we once thought was a terrible lizard, but more is like an awesome, feathery as all hell reptile. So congratulations, you now know what dinosaurs are. But, you know, you're probably wondering to yourself, Meg, you didn't go through a lot of different animals. How am I supposed to be able to tell if something's a dinosaur or not if things are based on evolutionary relationships? Well, you don't really have to do any hard work. You just can go to Google. You can type into the Google search bar, is Dimetrodon a dinosaur? And it'll show up. And the answer that it'll show you is no. So if you're ever in confusion about an organism, Rather than just saying it's a dinosaur because it's extinct and large, do the entire universe of paleontology a favor and Google it. I'm sorry for getting so worked up. It's just very frustrating for me to have to keep explaining that Plesiosaurus isn't a dinosaur when in fact you can just Google search it. So here, have a happy, friendly little fluffy troodon, almost in naval land, but not quite, wishing you a Merry Christmas. Have fun Google searching and you know, have a happy holiday the good of all modern dinosaurs in the world.